Does it feel good to get back to this again? What's up, everybody? Welcome to a game that I should have played a lot more a long time ago. <laughs> ah, but streams change, plans change. For some reason, we decided that it was a good idea to make an emote based around panties for the sake of raiding other channels. <laughs> I like to think I'm clever. Oh, shoutouts to the early crew here. Done randomly, of course, and Ice Cold Koopa as well. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, just because I'm recommending Kingdom Hearts 3 to people. Well, just because the game felt incredibly rushed despite the 13-year wait period we had for it. Yeah, it's one of my absolute favorites, too. I... I think it's so great that 4chan ran with the idea of a game where you date girls with disabilities and turned it into the most heartfelt, introspective, moving piece of literature you will ever read in your entire life because that was the funnier punchline. To directly mock the people who would make a snap judgment about the game just based on the concept. The internet is a beautiful place sometimes. Only sometimes, though. <laughs> when they feel like it. They can do some really amazing things. So. Oh no, they are. They are coops. Everybody on 4chan is a lunatic, but sometimes they're a lunatic in beautiful ways. Sup, Noel? How are you doing tonight? You know, I asked this question in the Discord if anybody wanted to actually... Uh, join me for COCOM on this one. I ultimately decided it might be better to just fly solo. And looks like people are agreeing in the Discord as well. Just because most of this is going to be reading. And most of this is going to be very focused reading, too. The purpose of these streams is basically for me to stretch my skills. Like, warm myself up for books. Keep myself sharp when I don't have any projects to really work on for audiobooks themselves. Besides, you know, you... <laughs> I hate to be that guy who's like, you know, you guys are lucky, I usually charge for this, but I don't know, people have paid me to narrate books and even a role in a video game so far, so I guess it is the only marketable skill I've got. All right. So are you guys ready? Hmm. So you can take all the good ideas for visual novels down. A lot of visual novels, a lot of making a good one is just knowing your source material, having a really good concept, and executing it to the best of your ability. Well, okay. It's a little more complicated than that. Con everybody's got ideas. Good ideas. Ideas that can become something amazing if put into the right hands. Hence what we've got in front of us today. It just takes time, effort, it takes a group that's passionate about it, and very few people manage to do it alone. Now, I have to apologize, we were originally, it even still says on the schedule, I think, that tonight we were going to play Lucid 9, Inciting Incident, instead of this, but as I was doing my research, I literally found out half an hour ago that that game is still in development. I've had people recommend it to me a lot, but I would rather play it when it's done. I would rather experience the entirety of the game as the developers intended it when it's finished, as opposed to only experiencing part of it and then never touching it again. Yeah, I've been having some... Like, there are trees that have been splintering and breaking outside. The wind's been crazy today. I apologize in advance if it shows up in the microphone because... Oh boy. Yeah, art is incredibly important for visual novels. Oh, that That's why it's a bullet point on the box, as it were. That they have this many CGs. They have this many... Uh, special pictures that show up at certain points in the game. And granted, it is just basically paying to see art at that point and choosing the correct routes. It takes time to get to the good art, but it means so much more.
when you know who that character is, what's going on in their head, what led to this situation, and also why this situation is important. But we'll break that down as we go. I like talking design, so... Without further ado... <clears throat> Light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The delicious trees provide the the deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. <sighs> Breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah, uh, yes, the note. It slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in this stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time is slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone's approaching me from behind. Hi, Hisao? You came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never is more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Iwanako? I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it, I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. Pathetic. Um, yes. I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst through my chest and claim this girl for itself. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. And all the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see, I wanted to know if you'd go out with me. I stand there motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feels like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Hisao? I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Hisao? My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. So The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, Iwanako running towards me. All these fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. You thought this was going to be a regular old-ass visual novel, didn't you? Surprise! Surprise! 
I knew it's almost like I knew what I was doing with that title or something. Yeah, sorry to let you guys know, this isn't an entirely blind run. I've played this game up to a point. Yo, I will mention when it is, but there's a particular route I want to go down. There's a particular character that I want to follow. So bear with me as that happens. And as somebody who was working on a drawing all last night and it didn't even come close to looking like this, can I just say how impressive it is that they have this many CGs just for the opening? The amount of time it would take somebody, even who's been doing this for years, to make something like this, that looks like this. You have a newfound appreciation for art when you try it yourself. I gotta say. You'll see it on Twitter if you follow me on there, what I've been drawing. I'm gonna send it to Proton John the next time he streams. <clears throat> it's been four months since my heart attack. And that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. Strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. I said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better. More appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I'd gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He answered everything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of onomen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but... My expectations are low enough that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows there's at least some hope. At some point, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, 
one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands, but I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. Felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside, instead of moving within. Can I just go on a personal tangent here for just a second? And I believe I told this story the last time we did this too. I was in the hospital for meningitis for about a month myself, and everything he's describing is on point. I don't remember anything about the time I spent in that hospital. Not a single detail. I couldn't tell you the names of any of the nurses or doctors that helped me. I couldn't tell you a single event or what I watched on TV or the nature of any of the visits, anything. It's just, it's eerie that an entire month of my life is just nothing that I have nothing to call my own from that time. It's... <sighs> a week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't even know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I'd set up for myself. The passages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened re only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There's this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hissa. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and l take a look myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from my paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, con... Contraindications and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I try to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting, attempting it only makes me feel sicker. All this... For the rest of my life? Every day? I'm afraid that is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please, calm down, Hassel. Please, calm down, Hassel. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? 
Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I... It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff. You wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mo- <clears throat> Of course, that's only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. <sighs> Looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a god- Okay, I want to try this again, because I- I raised up too quickly on that one. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity! Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one... A special school. That's... An insult. That's what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All of the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability? That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me, but... What can I do? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I had always thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway. But no, I don't say anything. The fact is that I know now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school... What are those even like? As much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. <sighs> but let me try. Clean slate isn't a bad thing. That's all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start. My life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. It's a good thing I don't have to do that doctor voice too much longer. The low, rumbling, deep voices always screw up my throat pretty badly. So now that we're done with the prologue, how y'all feeling so far? Although I know at least one of you has seen this before. <laughs> nice, Coops. 
Maybe one day weed would be legal and that'll be all you need. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not even gonna go into that one. Well, no, I am. I think that's actually something else I can stand up for. Did you know it's actually just about impossible to overdose on marijuana? <laughs> like, it would be so- it's so incredibly hard, there's never been a single documented case of it. A lot of the panic about that drug has been severely overblown. Like, it's one of those things, the more I read about it, the more I realize it shouldn't be illegal anymore. But I digress. I always thought a uh, futile was futile. <laughs> you can overdose on water way faster. Yeah, you hear that story about the guy who tried to drink a coffee at every single Starbucks in New York City? He ended that day having to be hospitalized for, get this, water poisoning. He had so much of it in his body, it was considered a harmful element at that point. <laughs> Overdosing on water is drowning. That's... Yeah, I actually... <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <clears throat> Alright. Let me take one more sip of water. You gotta take care of your throat when you do this. When you start feeling the scratchiness, make sure... Even more so than usual. Still ecstatic that a visual novel stream is happening right now. Sup, Bleed? I knew you were the one who was uh, really pulling for this. I apologize that it's not Lucid 9 like was promised. But as I said earlier, I just learned today that that game is still in development. Keep an eye on that one for me. Let me know when that game is 100% finished, and then we will run through it. Until then, I'm going to find some other ones, okay? The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wonder if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that... Felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have. More like a park with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh-cut grass and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. <sighs> it makes me shudder. I shake them off. Uh, stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. Makes me wish there was somebody here so that I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again. Now they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? <sighs> Ellipses. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there 
There's absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. Tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. Uh, you must be, uh, need, uh, Nikki? Nakai. Uh, so you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. Uh, my name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy. And he looks at his watch. Mm. Head nurse asks you, you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, uh, should I go later? Yes. Afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow not knowing what's waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? <laughs> oh, it's remembering my previous choices. I mean, no reason to be inhospitable, and... Like, our character is genuinely trying to put his best foot forward here based on the dialogue that he's been giving so far. So it just feels like, yeah. Yeah, of course I want to say hi to everybody. Come on, let's do our best here. No sense giving up now. Yeah, sure. I mean, isn't that normal? Of course. But not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Let's go, then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door down the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for Class 3-3. Muto opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip! This is a big step, I know that, but there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around. Partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. Hmm. Sorry, I just want to take a second to actually look at everybody who's in this class right now. It's like there are some visual cues on some of these characters, but I want you to... I just want to take a second to analyze the fact that every single one of them looks completely different. You can pick them apart from one another very, very easily. Even if a lot of these kids don't get names, you still recognize them. Like, I want to take a second to talk about all that. Like, there's this guy in the background. Th there are only two characters in this class who have their eyes closed, and that helps. This guy has a hat. Of course, there's this girl. If you look at her for a second, you can actually see that. There's this girl who has just bright blonde hair. The crazy thing is, none of these characters have super off-the-wall hair colors. None of them have, like, pink or, like, bright neon blue or anything like that. There's one character with heterochromia. Kind of makes you... I don't know what that is, why that's the de facto OC thing. There's probably a reason for it here. The developers, if I asked them, they'd probably explain to me what's going on with that girl, what they were thinking when they drew her. And then there's this character right here. If it weren't for the uniform, you might have trouble guessing what gender this character is. It's not just the hairstyle and the softer facial features, it's also the headband. And little details like that, tiny little character design choices, it makes you think, I wonder what their story is. It's subtle. It's it, The best ones always are. Hmm? Hang on a second. 
I may have thought the Batgirl's black leggings was bunny ears for the brunette in front. <laughs> that... <laughs> Hi, my disability is that I'm perpetually scared of everything around me. I can, I can literally die of loneliness. It's pretty spacious. Ceiling's unusually high, and there's lots of space left over around and in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only makes it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look... normal. Like students in any other school. <laughs> but then why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong with them. Only it's just not immediately obvious. Then I notice that one of them seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it were as if it will make her invisible. There's one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Uh sorry, I have to take a second. This guy in the back here, that hits a little too close to home. I, uh, my brother was in a lot of special education classes because, unlike me, I, I just have high-functioning Asperger's, or Asperger's, however you want to pronounce it. He had full-blown autism. I met a lot of people who were dealing with a lot of developmental things, and... Yeah... I, I immediately recognized what was going on there. Um, anyway. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rim of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery-looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands, and so does everyone else, except one girl in the first row who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing in thanks for this applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, I'm Hisao Nikai. And after that... My hobbies are breeding and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that... I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more. Something more exciting. I end up saying nothing. And the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I said, though. A few... Hmm... Hang on, can I go back? Can I go back? Uh, I know there's a log. Hold on. Uh. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. You don't see too many people playing this visual novel? I don't know why it's a good one. And there are several routes in it. <laughs> then again, it has been a couple years since it came out, so maybe that has something to do with it. Also, sub, Microberg. Or MicroBRG, however you want me to pronounce it. Welcome to the chat. Thanks for coming tonight. The first row girl claps on this round, with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandaged stump. Mirko. Ah. 
<laughs> that, ah, uh, okay. Little side note here before we continue. You want to mess up a streamer? Um, <laughs> there are two things you can do. Either capitalize your name weird or swap around letters on a really obvious, easy word like that. Like, I'm sure there's a story behind your username. But you will mess people up so badly, because most people will fill in the blank. Uh, this is a psychology thing. You, as long as the first- try this the next time you get- you handed a paper to your teacher or something like that. Just take one word and fl and swap around the letters in the center, but leave the ones on the end and- uh, on the beginning and the end the same. Most people will just scramble them out into a word they understand and completely pass over it. They won't even realize it's spelled wrong until they look over it a couple different times. <laughs> Mirko is my actual name. It's usually spelled... Ah, okay. I had no idea. Cool. I've actually never heard that name before. That's an interesting one. <laughs> when is it okay to ask who's your favorite waifu from what you've seen so far? Uh, from what I've seen so far, I don't entirely know what her deal is, but... I, uh, because I've never gone down her route before, but it's gonna be between... Oh, shoot, why, do, why am I forgetting their names off the top of my head? The quiet one and the loud one. The one who was hiding her face, and the one who- and this one right here. We'll find out their names eventually. Before I could capitalize, I kept being called Don- Donor. <laughs> I like arm bandage and the blonde. I wish I could sweep back over the room again, just to- you know, uh, it's too bad there isn't a redhead in this room that I could just gravitate to immediately. Hmm. You. This one, right here. Her, right on the edge of the room. I'm German. Huh, small world. I've actually got somebody else in here who shares that same trait. If you see somebody named Ashidaru, say hi. Not used in whatever country, uh, whatever you are coming from. Yeah, I have the, it's the same way with my last name. My last name has a Ukrainian descent from, to it. So... I've been told my last name is so rare that anybody who has it in the entirety of the United States is directly related to me in some way. It's kind of cool. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She's the class representative. She can explain anything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? <laughs> how could I know? Teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we'll be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Slow. Teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Uh, Hakamichi's right there. Uh, she's an A Hakamichi. As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her by the window. Uh, hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. Oh boy. I, I don't think I have the vocal range to take on this character right now, but that's also why we're doing this. Uh, two quick questions. What time do you got right now, and what times do you usually stream at the moment? I have 4.51 p.m. at the moment. I work on Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., and we usually go from 4 my time to 8 for the first stream, and then we take a break until 8.30, and then we play until 10 p.m. Uh, we stream... Uh, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. 
I actually have a uh, document below if you want to check my full schedule. Just a Google Doc that explains all the details of what we stream on what days. The general themes of each of them. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Drills enters the stage. Okay, trick to doing a female voice. First, the good vocal posture, which is you shrink your throat. You try and you try and shrink your diaphragm a little bit like I'm doing right now. And you bring up your tongue to the back of your mouth, sort of like you're doing an S sound. Or, or no, like you're t trying to take the back of your tongue and you're trying to touch that uh, dangly thing in the back of your throat. You also try to move your mouth as little as possible. So, uh, gotta go now. Almost 11 p.m. here and I got work tomorrow. Hey, thanks for being here, man. I hope to see you again in the future. Like, maybe one of, one of these days things will work out pretty well. Maybe you can catch the beginning of something like that. It's always good to see a new face, so have a good night with the rest of your night. Shrink. There's also a couple different vocal exercises you can do to sort of bring yourself up to a higher pitch. There's the mum exercise, and I promise not to go too on and on with this, because the tutorial I went just continued. She kept going up and up and up, octave after octave. What you're supposed to do is you go... Mum, 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 mum. And you just bring it up one incrementally, one step after the other, until you're at something like mum, 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 mum. Basically, you're just taking your voice as comfortably high as it can go. Something sort of like this right now, which is what I used to do. I would usually do female characters like this, just raise the pitch of my voice. But when you've got the proper posture. You have the proper posture, and then raise the your voice, and then you add an accent on top of it. It's much more convincing. <laughs> what? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. Also, sup, chat giraffe? How are you doing tonight? It's nice to meet you, too. But... <laughs> I'm not Hakamichi. I'm Misha, and I love how it strikes it through. <laughs> this is Hakamichi, see chan? Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her. The one I saw using sign language before. Looks like she's been staring at me this whole time. She nods once, nonchalantly, to show that she acknowledges my presence. But only barely. She has short, yet carefully, neatly brushed hair. A pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of a dainty nose, and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Ellipses. Did that actually sound pretty good? I'm kind of surprised, actually. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people and who better to explain things to you. I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would think I was Sichan. Sichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says it's nice to meet you, too. Ellipses. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Seachon, of course he is. If he wasn't, he wouldn't... Uh, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right. He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today. So soon. Uh, Heechon, right? Heechon? Yep. It fits, doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. Fnu, get with a deaf girl and you get two score. <laughs> and the jokes begin. <laughs> I mean, let's not dance around that. Like, this is still a dating sim. 
is a very, very good dating sim if you couldn't tell by that intro. It is a very well thought out and highly researched dating sim. It does a very good job of putting you in the mindset of a situation that hopefully most of us can't empathize with. But... It's still a game about eventually ending up with a girl. It's just the journey you go along the way is so freaking good. That's what makes it one of the best. It's not about the destination, it's the journey. In, ca in the case of visual novels. Or at least it should be, anyway. I don't really see how. <clears throat> it fits! You look just like I imagined. Ellipses. <laughs> yeah, you look just like a hit, John. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. El Ellipses. Akamichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly. Their hands a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um. Shinshan wants you to know that she's the class rep. So if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Ellipses. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you hadn't had the time to walk around and uh, familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Thanks. That would be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just kind of... Yeah, I, I just kind of came straight to class today. Ellipses. <laughs> That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school, either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Street John? <laughs> learn about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it half-assedly. But anyway... I don't say anything, and Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. Both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. Look down. Are you okay? Ellipses. Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Drills is the best part about glasses, changed my mind. Nope, nope, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> When I first read it, I thought she said class clown, and I was like, oh shit, that's mean, making her a mime. <coughs> Your girl laugh is scary. I'm trying my best on that one. Like, uh, to do a fake laugh, I have to lead it in by breathing a little bit. The <sighs> I have to get my throat ready for a laugh. I can't just pull it out of nowhere. Like, my normal laugh is just like, <laughs> you hear that <laughs> part. That, that little exasperated... <laughs> I notice it a lot, and it's something that bugs me. Like, having to deal with my waveform and audacity and whatnot. So, I, the thing is, though, it sounds weird without it. Like, to me, it just sounds weird if I try to... If I try to eliminate that or edit it out or something. So, I guess I'm stuck with it. Ellipses. Ah, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakamichi or a class rep all the time. Just call her Shichan. Uh, ellipses. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. And maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Ellipses. Yep, yep. Shizune is fine. <laughs> okay, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. 
Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assumed would be all business. Well, she still seems like that. Just less so, I guess. <gasps> huh? Oh, right! We haven't even touched the assignment! We should start work now, or Shichan will get mad. The assignment's also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. Here we go again. <laughs> that too. Ellipses. Shizune glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. Ellipses. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through. Combining aspects of both difficult and unnecessarily long. Still, we finished it a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. Clock tower bells ring, signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who's beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby where I met Muto, down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in this school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. It's big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. It's the cla- it's the cafeteria! Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care, so we proceed to the line. It's a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I've realized that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. <laughs> How nice. Almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random, follow Shizune to a table, sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention, and... <laughs> I feel like that neat. I try to do this in my audiobooks. Like, whenever the narrator is giving something in regards to an action, I try to react how somebody would. Like, he's bored at first, but then he suddenly gets surprised, so it would be more like, as I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. Ellipses. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite? Do you want to know something? What? About anything. We're your guides, so you should ask if there is something. Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's none of my business. <laughs> it's it's none of my business what other people's problems are. Or not even problems. That That's the wrong word. The moral of this game is that it's not... Like, here's the thing. The more you try to act like the knight in shining armor in this game, the more you get punished for it. So, <laughs> we're just going to... I'm not gonna pry. But I am curious about the library. Oh, yeah. Is there a library in the school? Lately, I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. There is. It's in the second floor. We can show it to you sometime. Thanks. I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. What's up, Ashidaru? Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very animatedly throwing sideway glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. Ellipses. I quickly notice the conversation and sign is not enough to fill a silence. 
We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. A dark-haired girl I noticed before slumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from her presence. Misha and Shizune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Besides me, Misha and Shizune are having... Beside me, Misha and Shizune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Ellipses. Unfortunately, we can't stay around and show... We can't... We can't stay and show you around today, Hichan. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. Ellipses. You'll find your way around here. I'm sure of it. Ah, uh, wait. The teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? Well, we can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own buildings, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually part of the main building. Ellipses. This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? Ellipses. Don't be silly, Hichan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway... All the nursing staff facilities are in there, too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going, then. See you tomorrow. Uh, yeah, thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walk in, hoping that this really will be only a quick visit, like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text, Head Nurse, and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large, and it smells strange. A friendly-looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy. But the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Oh, hello there. What can I do for you today? He's young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash that impression away when he smiles. Um, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. <laughs> Why, yes I am. Says so on the door, no? You can call me by my name, or just the nurse, like everyone else. Of course. I shake off my confusion, real realizing I, pro I probably should grab his extended hand. His handshake's rather firm and friendly. Right, uh, I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name's Hisao Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation, and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Nakai. I was just reading your file in the morning. I was just reading your file in the morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Can you guys actually tell my voices apart? I'm curious about that. 
I mean, I know the girl voice is distinct enough, or like Misha's voice at the very least, but the male voices, I tend to feel like they all just, they all just sound the same to me. I'm trying to give this guy sort of a younger, um, higher tone, this sort of dude bro kind of voice, somebody who sounds really laid back. Somebody who can be professional when he wants, but hey, life's kind of casual. Good. We've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there's a problem. From the famous 24-hour nursing staff. Ah, <sighs> this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. This joke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. Yeah, you'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, uh, let me just find your file again. While well, he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, I've let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly, three times a day and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. So... You already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening, or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Uh, rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Uh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport, just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There's no mention of the cause in your papers. Uh... Not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would do you good. We have physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Uh, swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were? Uh, very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and sets them on the desk, obviously content. Good, uh, that's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. <laughs> A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building, although to my eyes they still look one and the same. So what's the story with this? <laughs> Started out as a generic visual novel. Meeting our long lost, uh, meeting our longtime childhood crush in the middle of a snowfield, uh, following the love letter that one of her friends left in our math notebook. Our hearts started pounding as she admitted that she wanted to start dating us, and that's when it stopped pounding, or stopped beating at all, and we spent the next four months in a hospital learning that we have uh, chronic arrhythmia along with a heart muscle deficiency that basically means that we belong here. We need to be here along with all of the other students because this is something that heavily affects this character's life. 
It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they're going. I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? Ellipses. I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. Set a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms. Shrubbery, flowers, and an overbearing smell fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. It takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. Same goes for the elevators at the ends of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and a shower, as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The nameplates on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. <laughs> Except we didn't die, giraffe. Even our characters said straight up, well, my life isn't over. There's still things to look forward to. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements. Then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. A bespectacled boy is standing in the doorway. He's looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. Ugh, his breath stinks of garlic. Sal... Kai... <laughs> I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization, and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, sup, dude. My name's Kenji. Uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There were some suspicious-looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people, too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out-of-place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, Hisao. Me? I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 118. Bleak beige walls, 
white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room. Impersonal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. Note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. Hi, Hichan. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Uh, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. Kinda hoped I would have, then there would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and the entire day today, too. Still am, I think. Damn, I have to distract myself somehow so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... The bottles of medications neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside, and then read the glued-on pharmacy label. Isao Nakai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. It's kind of twisted having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I bane my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. Ellipses. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain. After that, I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room, like fingers. Sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon, the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night. And becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. And I've never been to boarding school before, but it's, like, imagine how out of place you feel to begin with, let alone dealing with this on top of that. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I'd forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. Uh, uh, this is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that, indeed, it is me who's supposed to be the one living here. My bag's on the floor, my new school book's on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating, until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. Yeah, that's also a thing to consider. He transferred in the middle of the school year, too. Like, this was a completely unexpected thing. So it's not like there are so many things the poor kids gotta get used to. They do a good job of making you feel for this guy, which was important. Again, this is a game where you date girls with disabilities. That is the whole premise. 
going a ways to put you in this character's head and make you realize that, yeah, he's he is A, supposed to be here, and he's not here specifically because he's looking to date somebody. Far from it. That is the last thing on his mind right now. Was very important. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but feeling a fresh cloth against my back is a good one. Natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. And that goes for other things, too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha's constant laughter and Shizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decided to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Ellipses. Ellipses. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the erase of her pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. Ellipses. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sichan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm. That's a good question, Heechan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. Ellipses. Oh, that's right. Everyone's encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred in at a... So, you actually transferred in at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Sure. What's the festival of a... Sure, what's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, Heechan. Uh, the truth is, it's a local event, and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish, and starts signing hard and heavy. Ellipses. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh, who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words out at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. Uh, I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Ellipses. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time. Elli <gasps> now! Now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quickly sits and quiet uh, quickly quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though, brushing it off without a care. Ellipses. We're in the middle of class and should start working. Uh, th that's right, Shichan. What? Oh, that's right. Shichan, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? Wait, I saw that face. Don't she? Don't she? <laughs> we talked about this earlier. Like, 
it's it's proper to look at the person that you're talking to. I saw that though. Don't think you're getting away. I I I'm a I'm an anime protagonist, so I know what's coming here. Could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long, dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher, who's also looking at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? Hey, John, is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me looking after the girl who left? No, nothing. Ellipses. Okay. Well, like we were asking, you don't have any you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. <laughs> Not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Sure. Ellipses. Yay! <laughs> okay, John, perfect. The rest of class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. Ellipses. Yes, it is, he John. Impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but when anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but uh, that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune? I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really, Shizune can't hear me. But it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. And then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. Ah, uh, this is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me, as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Ellipses. Are you sure, Hee-chan? Very sure. Ellipses. <laughs> You're wrong, Hee-chan. Because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities. And the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. <laughs> Shizune pushes her glasses up the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and packs her... Gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. I'd almost forgotten I was supposed to have lunch with them. Ellipses. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? <laughs> That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plane? Well, I guess. At my old school, I liked to eat outside near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until the near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there's a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in a classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had boxed lunches. 
After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So, Hichan, you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? Ellipses. Right! Right, Shichan. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha straightens her posture as if she's about to deliver a speech. Hichan, do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm... There's a book club, right, Shichan? Right, but... It seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Hichan. It's a really popular club. Ellipses... Ah! Okay, but... More to the point, Hichan. Does this mean... You don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Ellipses. Good! Great! That's great, Hichan. Really great. <laughs> Why is it so great? I I'm starting to understand what you guys mean when you say my girl laugh is kind of scary. Because the thing is, I'm already pushing my voice a little far on this one. So let's try that. Shrink the diaphragm. Tongue to the back of the throat. Raise your voice up high enough that it's just comfortable. <laughs> the thing is, she's supposed to sound a little unnatural to begin with. Like, she's so loud and brash. If Nuke could cover his face cam and pretend to be a girl and nobody would notice. I wonder, is it that good? Is it? I, I'm honestly... Because I have a baritone voice. People keep telling me I have that sort of... Like, my... Well, okay. This this was mostly my mom, and, you know, she, she's kind of biased on this front, but she would always tell me, you have that kind of radio voice. Or she specifically... Most people say I have a radio voice. She specifically told me I have a movie voice. Which is, uh... <laughs> Coming this summer... Action. Romance. Desire. I don't hear it myself, but I'll take her word for it on that one. Some people are willing to pay me for it. Just move the cam over Drills' face. I mean, well, all anime waifus are trash, Giraffe. We know this already. We accept it. <laughs> but we like them anyway. You know, it's sort of like the art that I was working on for Proton John last night. Like, I'm not an artist. I know this drawing is trash, but I also spent uh, eight hours on it, so it's trash that I'm proud of regardless. I'm happy with how it came out. No reason. Well, Hichan, other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there's one other thing. Student council! I see. I didn't know this school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it and Misha's laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion, in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has the voice, uh, who has to voice whatever she says. Ellipses. <laughs> hmm? Right, right. Hichan. Maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we can hang out every day, Hichan. Shichan and I are both in student council. Actually, Shichan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. As if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Ellipses. <laughs> of course we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to- So you're admitting that. Ellipses. <laughs> no, we admit nothing. I mean, Hichan, of course it would be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. 
But even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one's school. Yep, it's true, Heechan. Besides, you don't want to spend time with us after school, Heechan. I can't tell if she's being genuine or if this is just really good acting. I want to try that. I want to try that one again here. Besides, you don't. Are you saying you don't want to spend time with us after school, Heechan? You can just imagine, like, the faux disappointed tone in her voice where it's just off. It's just like you can tell she's putting on an act. She's giving the big puppy eyes, batting her eyelashes a few times. <laughs> Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest, although they are already pretty cute to begin with. Well... Ellipses. So it's settled then. Welcome to the student council, Heechan. What? No! No! Aw, see, so see, Chan. Of course, and when he goes so easily. Ellipses. Yep, that's right. Though it would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well, she Chan owes me candy now. You were betting on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. Susan I seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. Ellipses. <laughs> That's interesting, Heechan. Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, Heechan? If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Ellipses. Yep. Well, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up, and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So I'll have to decline. Ellipses. Heechan, I'm very offended. Are you saying that you don't trust us, and that we would pull something so disingenuous? That makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. Ellipses. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No! How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? P paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. I wanted to point this out a little earlier. When we get back to the dorms, I'm going to show a... I'm going to emphasize a very specific design quirk in the background art here. You make a paper triangle... And then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, Heechan. Ellipses. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, Heechan. <laughs> that means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How'd you know, Heechan? Shizune frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I want to say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Ellipses. Okay, Heechan, how about Risk? The game of world domination! I don't know what that is. It's really fun, Heechan. You fight for control of the world with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after school. Ellipses. Oh, really, Heechan? We can play just for fun, Heechan. Shichan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, 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 perfect! We'll see you after school in the student council room then, Hichan. Wait, why there? Because... that's where we keep the game. <laughs> I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. 
So in the end, I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends, and we go back to class. Oh, there she is again. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. I wonder if that dialogue is different if we asked, uh, if we asked Shizune about her deafness earlier in the story. If we actually go through that scene. I think about that kind of, those kinds of things as a game designer. Because your previous choice would influence who your character is going forward, right? Things to think about. After, sc after school, Shizune and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I'd been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. <laughs> What's wrong, Heat-John? Ellipses. That's right, we're just going to go play a game of Risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still... For some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? You? M this makes you guys see... Hold on. This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. Ellipses. That's not true, Hichan. Shichan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. L life is threatened? Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that! I know you heard me! You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it, Noel. It's like, I, I will always say this every time somebody brings up the concern, and now and in the future. Do, interact with the stream however you want. I don't care if you're quiet. I don't even care if you show up all the time. Just the fact that you show some kind of interest in what we do around here, that's enough for me. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it is quite large. Maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. I could at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most noticeable thing that this room doesn't have is other people. Are we early? Ellipses. No. What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Ellipses. Yeah, that's right. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. Ellipses. Hichan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain it to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, 
This looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to... Let me try that again. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Ellipses. Kichan, Shichan wants to know that you're taking too long to make a move. Shichan also says that she'll let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. E ellipses. Shichan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> no, no, natural. <laughs> you are so how do I make this sound natural in this situation? Because he's a little exasperated and focused and... <sighs> You're competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Ma magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who returns signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples, as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Ellipses. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Uh, wait, please slow down, Shichan. Uh, um, Shichan, Shichan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Uh, okay. Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. <laughs> what do deaf people without hands do? Okay, I might have an answer to this one. Because I've seen this before. There are some people who learn how to lip read. In fact, uh, there's a ton of crossover with this. Uh, a surprising number of people who learn sign language also learn how to lip read. And based on that, they can sort of, kind of put words together. Through teaching and training and, through, and people who have done this kind of thing before, they can actually learn to somewhat speak, somewhat hold a conversation with people. Of course, the words aren't one-to-one, -one, but they get close, enough to where most people can understand what they're saying. Just a thought. Ellipses. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Hmm, she has a point, attack aggressively, or it's a trap. It's smarter to play defensively here. So, okay, this is the point where we come up into the game. I know which character I want to go with. I know which route I want to go down. But do you guys feel pretty strongly about this? Do we want do we want to just go with the first character we met? Do we want to gain points with her? Do we want to go down the Shizune route? I honestly want to know what you guys think. What's your favorite route? Who do you want to go with? Because I'm going to tell you who I'm interested in. And it's been a while, so forgive me for not knowing her name off the top of my head. This is totally not me going to the Katawa Shoujo website so that I can figure it out again. <laughs> I usually go down the Ren route. She, out of all the potential matches in this game, she is the one that I find the most fascinating. Then again, it's not like any of the characters are bad. She just, her entire route just rings a chord with me. 
classes is my least favorite. T is pretty great. Hmm. I hear Lily's route is sad, though. Like, it gets really, really depressing, especially if you follow somebody else's route as well, though I'm not sure whose. Rin is fun, too. Okay. That's what. That's two votes for Rin. Well, one and a half. I'm going to count mine as a half vote because I'm the streamer. I'm kind of... I'm kind of biased in this sense, but Rin also has the best music. Which one is Rin? We actually haven't met her in game yet. It's surprising because we haven't. Yeah, these two are the only potential matches we've met up to this point. And to be fair, I am very curious. Like, we know what's going on with Shizune. To this day, I have no idea what's going on with Misha. I don't know what her thing is. I don't know, like, what her whole deal... I, there are hints here and there, but I couldn't even guess. What, Kenji? <laughs> Kenji is the de facto route. He's the route we go down if we don't end up scoring any points with any of the girls. And apparently his route is entertaining in its own right, but... Um, I've actually seen a point against Shizune's route, so it's a tra it's a trap. It's smarter to play defensively here. It's likely that she's just trying to psych me out. Looking at the board again, I have a pretty good defense set up, and I'm not going to wreck it doing something reckless. A few turns later, I lose the game anyway. Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. Ellipses. Every time, man. <laughs> hey, Chan, you lost when you allowed me to take North America. I mean, uh, she, Chan, not me. Ellipses. Getting control of North America is ambitious because it provides a five arming bonus, but you can attack it from three fronts, so you must defend them all. Ellipses. I thought you'd have more guts. How disappointing. Ambition, Heechon. Your play needs to be more daring. Ambition, ambition. Ellipses. I was really excited when you took South America, but then you switched to playing defensively just because you gained a small advantage. That's no good, Heechon. You didn't take enough risks, and when you did, you didn't follow through. That's terrible, Heechon. Damn, what's it to her if I played too carefully? There's no need to rub it in my face. Ellipses. I wonder if you'd even be any good for the student council. What's this? Reverse psychology? I guess I don't have to worry about joining or not in that case. Ellipses. Giving up just like that? I expected more of you. Seriously, is Shizune trying to taunt me into joining the council? Besides, I don't even want to join. It's only my second day. I can't make that kind of commitment. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. And these two, they're a little weird. <sighs> Fine, I'll consider joining the council, but I want to take a look at the clubs before I decide. Really, Heechon? You're not just saying that to make us feel better? Yeah, yeah. I'm just not sure that I want to. Aww. Ellipses. Okay, Heechon, we're not going to give up so easily. You said maybe. There's still a chance you'll come around. Ellipses. Come on, we could really have fun. We could play more Risk, and maybe one day you could beat me, uh, unless we graduate before that. That doesn't make me feel any less reluctant about joining, you know. Ellipses. <laughs> Surely you're not that horrible at board games. Maybe we can play a game you know then, to give you a handicap. I might have said that just to make you feel better after all. Aw, that's cold, Heechon. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Uh, sorry, I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. Ellipses. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. 
I think you're right, Shichan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. You can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No, thanks. It's okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. One flight of stairs up and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third one. Okay, back. Who did you choose? Uh, we haven't... Well, we haven't chosen Shizune, that's for sure, because we chose to play defensively. We're still, uh... I think we're about to meet... I actually believe we're about to meet one of the other girls. I remember this sequence. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. I should probably move this around a little bit. If I wanted to make this layout make sense, I should be looking in this direction. Because then, from the perspective of the... From the perspective of the camera, it looks like I'm looking at the game. Makes sense? Dirty out just a smidge. And just a smidge more. Just a little bit off the top. <laughs> just the tip. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there's a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? Hang on, I'm adjusting my mic a little bit. I'm doing the six-inch thing because that's the sweet spot with your mic. You want to be exactly that far away from it. That way you get the best results. I bet on the ladder and shows my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside and I can ask for directions, no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to this school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it's much easier to open than I'd anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head even further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek, hello, on my lips is quickly snatched away. Ellipses. This is not what I was expecting. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes in sense in English, too. This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Why you always gotta say ellipses? Because that's what they are, and it's better than just, just going, uh... Or filling it up with, like, uhs and ums and, like, just silence. The ellipses is supposed to represent a pause, like a character who's just left breathless at a situation or doesn't know what to say. I think it's more fun that way, actually, ironically saying out loud ellipses every single time, because it's such a trope in RPGs and video games in general, honestly. Evidently haven't taken her time to assess the situation. The girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes, but doesn't look at me. Oh god, this is gonna be my hardest voice yet. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. The movement of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. I love how he knows she's not from Japan because blonde hair, blue eyes. Uh, hi. 
sorry for intruding. I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step toward another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the sight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. The slight cloudiness to her eyes, sorry about that. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku? Uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. Once which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Satel. Pleased to meet you. Hisao. Hisao Nikai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't step I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there, her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. Seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of offering pre of the offerer preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Which room are you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and me, I mean, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods. A small metallic tapping coming from the teacup, indicating it being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right. I'm in, in the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. I think I brought this up last time we tried to play through this game, too. I'm sorry for the time we spent waiting on that, by the way, but this shot and that line say so much about what kind of story they're trying to tell here. Almost every visual novel on Earth is trying to put you in the shoes of this person who is just barely even a personality. Somebody who is just an empty vessel for you to project yourself into. But this guy, this guy right here, he has a name, he has a place in the world, he has parents, he has a history... He has a long journey that he has to walk down to come to terms with the th horrible things that have happened to him in the past. And yet, he's still a perfectly reasonable individual to most of the people he meets. 
He's still able to hold a conversation. He's still generally pleasant to the people around him. He's a flawed individual, but he's also a nice individual. He's a funny individual. He has a personality. And more and it's little lines like this like he's how he's more of a coffee person rather than a tea person and yet he's willing to take the drink anyway because it's polite and his face this is important not all of the cgs not all of the cgs are just the girls there are actual shots that include him meaning they want you to get used to what this guy looks like. This is a deliberate choice on the developer's part. And it just... It makes this game so cool to me. Katawa Shoujo is something special, man. In more ways than one. You're clearly the blonde. <laughs> is that you? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this wouldn't be a very difficult cosplay. You just have to find a white business shirt, some green pants, black belt, black tie. Although black bow if you're going for what she is. I remember some I remember the creative director for Pokémon bringing up once that the reason they kept bringing in new female characters is because girls were easier to customize. You know, me being a rebel, my first response to that was, challenge accepted. <laughs> if I remember right, you chose legs last time. No, as a matter of fact, I chose Rin. Rin was my choice in that one. Although, I do love, uh, Emmy? Is her name? I do love Emmy's personality. I love Lily's personality. Like I said, I don't think there's a single bad character in this bunch. They're all lovable. I just have my own personal preferences. Nonetheless, this smells quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Oh, Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh, well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself, as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So, which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third-year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My, my, there's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh, sure. Sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Uh, do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on that, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune's blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems to be relaxed and calm. Almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if this school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Ah, good. That's a relief. 
I've really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting, him to, not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it, as Lily does the same. <laughs> Joining clubs helps you get laid. Apparently, considering how all of these games go. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Huh, time's gone quickly. Sorry? Ugh, right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. It just looks like the sun's starting to set. Seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Ah, oh, sorry, Hisao. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly move to allay her concern. Oh, no, it's okay. The, li the library's still open, isn't it? She pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True. It's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I, ha I have well enough time to get there. Hmm, I'll make it going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it all right. Well, unless my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's all right. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together, we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers. We slowly walk through the hallway. Doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm-looking room, apparently situated in the center of the floor rather than either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. Hey, see you later, giraffe. Thanks for coming tonight, buddy. I always appreciate it. Hope to see you again in a future stream. Italy, it easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. Oh, I love that atmosphere, that sort of smell of paper. It's, it's very distinct. You get a little bit of it when you walk into something like an office supply store, like... Never mind, I was going to say, say the name of the place that shall not be named, and it reminded me of my retail job. You know what, it's been a couple years, I'm fine with it. It don't like when you walk into Office Max or a place like that. But what really reminds me of it is my grandfather's old office. He had this giant room back in his old place in Anaheim, California. Oh my goodness, that was my favorite place to hang out. Just all of the different papers he had. This giant map on one wall of the world. This huge whiteboard that he'd let me doodle on. And it was covered in all kinds of notes related to all manner of different things at any given moment. Papa was... Papa was like me. He's a mad scientist. He loves... <laughs> He's the kind of person where, if he put his mind to it, he could have ruled the world. I try to follow in that kind of example. I try to be like him, because he was a truly wonderful human being, and we don't have enough people like him in the world today. There don't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. 
Yuko, are you here? She says it to thin air, since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Ah! The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Somebody asked me earlier who best girl in this story is. This, and for me, it's Yuko. Red hair, glasses, freckles, feminine colors, very bookish and nerdy type. This seems like a character like they just reached into my head and took all the aspects I love in women and put them into one character. About the only thing that's missing is my maid fetish. Uh, hi Lily, how can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual, and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. Uh, it's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped, and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry for making you worry. This is nothing. I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, uh, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, repeat with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look. She seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, uh, uh, Lily, did you get my message? Message, hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived? Right, right, they finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... A Mr. Celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure. She notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Ah! Oh no! I'm sorry for not noticing you before! Did you need to check out a book? Or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry! The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me. Yuko, this is Hasao, a new student. Hasao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Ple Pleased to meet you. Hasao. Right. Hisao. Pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visually attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I... Uh, please, Lily, I can't... I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How's it any responsibility at all? I don't get, but her objection is so sincere. I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pop... <laughs> it probably was a little more in uh, interjection than that. But, so, there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to, not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. Well, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaku's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that'd be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Um, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organize and shelve all of them. It's so troublesome and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. Ellipses. Very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then, if you don't mind. 
It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. Normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is. A library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lily in snuck with us in here. Unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease. Just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks, set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further, though, I discover a nice, quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of several beanbags. It's the dark-haired girl from my class, the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face, which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had pegged her as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of lies in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts, looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third, if not a half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second, I'm shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to, coll to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. I... I don't know how to approach this. Probably being... I, I've been... Uh, hmm. I always have trouble on this one. It's like, why give me the choice if this doesn't matter, right? Like, how I compose myself here. I'm probably being a little... I've been warned before that I'm being a little too forward if I just approach her and introduce myself. Probably respecting her boundaries a little bit and being like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you, would be the best one. Although this is probably the interaction that... Hmm, no, we thought about this last time. You know, I'm gonna choose the thing that makes sense for me right now. We're just gonna... I've decided I'm not going to go for any particular route. At this exact moment, I'm not going for any particular route. I'm just going to do the thing that makes sense at the time. I'm going to play this game my way. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh god, what voice do I give her? My soft-spoken voice is already being given to Lily. It's... it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, um... Do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit, but finally she nods. Just a little. Uh, okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. So, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. Heading off for now. Have a good night, Fnu. Hey, you have a good night too, Noel. Hopefully the storm's let up where you're at. Wind's been blowing a little strongly on my end, so... But it's been sporadic. Hopefully this is... It's finally at the point where it's dying down now. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I... no. We... are in the same... 
the same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Hanako. I'm Hanako. Ellipses. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name just to have something to say, but really it's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to getting diff to being different to each other, and here I am being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. Ellipses. So I tried to read the covers and introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction. I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same and only pretending to be immersed in life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though. It darts around like a scared rabbit. When her gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... 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 I've gotta go do something! I completely forgot to do my vocal posture for that one, even. It was so sudden. I I'm getting used to it, though. I don't have to force my throat back as much. It's feeling a little more natural to hop into this point, you know? I've gotta go do something! Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she's nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see a... Uh, notice a girl run past here? Um, maybe. What did she look like? Long, dark hair. Kind of shy. She had... Well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh, dear. Yuka, would you excuse me? I'd better try and find her. Uh, sure. I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later, then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? But what did you do? Nothing! I was just looking for some books, and then we got... And then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think, and she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? I wonder. It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound all that convincing. It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casually only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. Makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. What? Did that sound stupid? No, no, it sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuki Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desks really like doing that. Did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing, but I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want some books, but I left them over there because... 
I'll just go get them. I fetched my stack of books from beside the bean bags where Hanako and I were sitting and returned to the counter. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? I surprised myself with that too, honestly. At least when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. Couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library books with one arm, I trawl my pocket for the key to the door. Sudden sound from behind startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying, or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. I don't know whose voice this is. I turn around to see who is talking to me. Ah. Who is it? I turn around to see who is talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before, yesterday. I don't think so. I want to remember someone who I only who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before. You live across the hall. You're Kenji. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met and you're telling the truth and I just can't remember it or you're a spy. He pauses. A psychic spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room, although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do you- how do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face damningly. Unlike you! Stop that, man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies. If you think you can pass as Hassal because I'm legally blind, you are sorely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, the resemblance is real, real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there. Genji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh, wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards, just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good, I think. Something wrong? I don't know. Just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually, even if you doubt discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's a hard reality we live in. Slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. You see? This is how it is, this world. There's no justice. You see? Even when I lose, I win, because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He, dis he dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So, what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? That's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really, if I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face. I guess it could go either way. Come on, let's be nice here. Yeah, she was cute. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here. A strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark, like a black hole. 
Have you noticed the number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that is a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream. But no. What I am about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I am not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. He doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground. The site of a feminist infiltration. The disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In case this Cold War turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the internal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the buildup of a military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They're so cunning. As expected of women. Soon the day will come when... Kenji's voice tra... Soon the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. That is why you can't trust them. They'll string you along and then kill you. Just as they killed me. You will end up just like me. Oh, hell no. I can't stop... Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So? You're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop it! Stop! I lost you way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow? That's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets. You don't like puppets. Okay. Graphs are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking. Moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. God, this is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Genji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That's my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate the whole last part. And that, la and that part is kind of important. There can only be one, like in that foreign movie where there could only be one, and in the end there is only one dude left because that was the point. I have never seen... That's my favorite line in this whole game, by the way. <laughs> I have never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of the other dark and complex conspiracies that the school holds. As tangled as... Quick, finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast con feminist conspiracy to them. Denial's a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked right through it like a ghost. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. You know, Lee, I like your approach. 
Just means that every guy can get 1.5 girlfriends. Or we just gotta have some lesbians to even it out. I don't know, this is a boarding school. The likelihood of that is more probable than you think. <laughs> it's because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks, and it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. This school is some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. <laughs> what irony. One would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off. and The words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place really is more a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. How are you guys holding on right now? God, it's a journey to do this. There's so much going on at any given moment, it's like it drains you. Emotionally, you just feel like out of energy at the end of something like this. There's just so much emotion going on at any given moment. It's... It reminds... It's like doing audiobooks in a lot of ways, which I guess was the point of this exercise. Like, I can actually feel myself... I, mean, I think I mentioned this earlier... The whole vocal posture thing that, I try, that I'm trying to do, it's a lot more natural. I don't have to force it as much, and I can swap in between them without really taking a whole lot of time to pause. So hey, I learned a trick tonight. Wasn't for nothing. I feel very tired this morning. Probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. Hang on a sec. I gotta take care of my throat for a minute. You know, these visual novel streams are much more laid back. I forgot how chill they are. I forgot how much it, how much room it just leaves to sit and talk. I should have brought some snacks or something. Maybe some gummies so you wouldn't hear my chewing on the mic. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. Sorry, it already looks like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now, though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't have an answer for them if they do, so this situation is convenient for me. About ten minutes into class, Hanako walks in and takes a seat, but no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however... Stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. This is a smile that says, We have you now. There is no escape. Hey, Sean. It looks like we're together again. Yay, yay. Misha leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now, unless I were to jump through the window. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. Ellipses. What's wrong, Hee-chan? Ellipses. Oh, Hee-chan, have you been thinking about what we said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Hee-chan. We were talking about it after you left. It would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? <laughs> no, it, it's, it wasn't another question. It was... Right? Right. <laughs> I'm so happy you two are able to have a laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode, 
and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly traumatic and important way. When I actually look at the stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something a... <clears throat> Sorry. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. Looks like she's working alone. I can't remember her seeing with wor working with other people before. Thinking back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who, Hichan? Her. Hanako. Over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, Hichan. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Hmm. No, I don't think that would be a good idea, Hichan. Why not? Shichan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lilting up and down quality present in everything she says. <laughs> Just because Hichan. By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation, and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she's been saying this whole time. Ellipses. What, Shichan? The friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh, I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. I know, Shichan. It's fine if you ever hear. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her, I wouldn't be able to understand a thing Shizune is saying, and vice versa. Is that also why she signs all the time? So there is never a conversation Shizune will be left out of? Ellipses. Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hee-chan. We finish with time to spare. And I decide to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria, as, frankly, the food so far has been... subpar. And this ends Shizune and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go all the way there. And what about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? <laughs> Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. Look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks. The ones with actual box lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only to be... only interrupted by short bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels like feels that I'm the only one that can see her, almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her own accord? I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I've started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do... Hmm. Good question. That is a very, very good question. Uh, see, I know you're not supposed to feel sorry for people is the thing. Like, what's the motivation behind this? As us, as a character. Hey, see you later, Ashidaro. Thanks for coming tonight. What should we do in this situation? Are we only talking to her because we feel sorry for her for being so alone? Last time we tried to approach her, she completely freaked out, but she at least gave us her name last time. Maybe she doesn't mind us as much, but... And, and we know now to show a little more tact. Hmm. What would I do in this situation, realistically? 
Actually, that's a terrible question. I'd be too awkward in real life to do anything. So what do I want to do in this situation? What is my motivation here? That's the main question we need to be asking. Am I trying to swoop in and be in her knight in shining armor? Be the friend that she... That we have... <laughs> not seen her have at this point? Or are we legitimately interested in her as a person? Hmm... It's tough. Why is she all alone? What... Is it none of my business? It's like it's that same thing like not asking Shizune about her deafness. It's none of my business what her deal is, so I hope the game follows my mindset on this. That I legitimately just want to be her friend. I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I'd better say something. Um, hey there, Hanukkah. <laughs> so... Well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here and thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so noticeable from close up. That's okay. It was my fault. Oh, that wasn't anyone's fault, it just kind of happened. So are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. Yes, I'm Billy. Oh, you mean... Oh, this hurts to say. You mean Lily the blind girl? Hanako only nods in response, and I can't help but wonder if defining people through their disabilities is a faux pas of the worst kind, or just normal around here. Guess that explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Yes. As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I think I'm making her nervous again. I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. N no that's not it. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come here. Oh, uh, because it's hard to get around the classroom? Not really. Hanako's gaze drifts past my shoulder and towards Shizune. Shizune? Hanako nods again. What about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly this is something she doesn't want to talk about. Does make a strange sort of sense, Shizune and Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough talking to Shizune through Misha, even when you can see whose hands are talking. Hanako is so focused on Shizune that I'm the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily... Ah, oh, Hanako. Good morning. Is the president here? Yes. Hanako glances over her shoulder at Shizune again, as if to confirm she can't hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off, then. Lily's sigh and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of enmity between the two. How do you pronounce that word again? Enmity? Enmity. Hold on, we have Google. We can solve this problem. And, and, ah. I never understood the dictionary ones. Hang on. Enmity. So it was enmity, okay. Sorry if that was a little loud for people. <laughs> yes, that's Emma saying, in case you were wondering. <clears throat> Alright, let's get back into character here. Text history. I suppose we'd best be off, then. Lily's sigh and the tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. 
I guess there's some kind of enmity between the two. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, they would tell me. It's only my third day here. I should be trying to make friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out that this school has little feuds, just like my old high school. Even if people are more tolerant of others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey, Lily. How are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh, my. Is that his Sal? I didn't realize you were here. Seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. Ah, uh, so the emphasis would be a little more like, Oh, is that Hassau? I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were here. Sorry, Lily. I thought you realized. No, it's all right, Hanako. Hassau, please don't worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. If you say so. I'm still working this place out. Well then, I think you'll find most people here a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you're feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Oh, Lily? Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Hassau, but we must be off. Hanako really doesn't look all that comfortable here right now, and Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but Lily hmms quietly, still smiling. I'm sure that we could accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me, and then she freezes, wide-eyed. Sure. Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this so easily if she saw how scared Hanako looks, but it can't be helped now. Declining after the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. So we leave, all three, together. Lily walks beside the wall, letting her cane gently tap against it every now and then. Hanako comes along right beside her, so close that she's practically half-hugging her as they go. Although it must make her walking that much harder, Lily takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a steam train. Hanako shrieks a little and my vision briefly goes black. Ah! Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. They belong to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and has now fallen down onto the hallway floor. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. Former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during a lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does, but they are not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs end in shins and feet made of some black metallic or plastic-like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose, and jumps up. Aw, oh, man. Hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I wasn't looking where I was going, and you just came out of nowhere. Sorry, sorry. She's looking really apologetic, in the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything, since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay. Don't worry about- Ugh. I say that, but there's a stinging pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overexert yourself, don't forget your medication, and most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heart beat. It seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds, dumbfounded, until I realize that I probably worked look looked worse off than I really was, doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I'm overly worried about my heart. Uh, no. No need. I'm fine. 
Managing to say something in response, I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time, and take a deep breath. She just, she just knocked the wind out of me. Big time. But it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. It's okay. I said I was fine. Nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good. I was... Is how? What happened? She's not quite up to speed for obvious reasons, but she sounds very worried. More than what the situation deserves, really. Uh, someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious. Just winded. Ah, uh, sorry. It's my fault. I was just going to get some stuff and I was kind of in a hurry. That someone here is Emmy, isn't it? The little girl coughs quietly and shuffles her plastic or metallic feet, looking down at them before saying anything. Uh, hi, Lily. Hanako. I guess the girls know each other. Do please try to be more careful. You might, you might be sturdy enough to endure these sorts of accidents, but there are people who aren't. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child. Caught by a little child caught misbehaving. Hi, Coops. Welcome back, buddy. That's so cute. I find myself smiling. I know that. I, I am. Um, I was just. Uh, I gotta go. Teacher will have my head. I promised to help with printouts, but when, but I went running instead. Oh, sorry, I've got to change and everything. Before any of us can say a thing, Emmy has already bolted away, leaving the hallway eerily quiet. Does that kind of thing happen often around here? There are more rules in Yamaku than usual for running in corridors. But that rarely stops Emmy, it seems. She shakes her head weakly and offers a slight, composed smile. I don't think there's anything we can do to stop her, I'm afraid. Shall we be off, then? Lily heads off along the hallway, and Hanako hurries after her. The route to the room the two use for tea is fairly simple to retrace, being still fresh in my mind from yesterday. Lily and Hanako quickly go about the business of making lunch. Before I can o even open my small bag of food, Lily's busying herself with her thermos and tea bags as Hanako is setting out both their lunch boxes. So, is this what you meant by coming here almost every day? Yes, Hanako and I usually have lunch here. It suits both of us, so we ended up using this room regularly. After seeing Hanako's reactions to me over the past couple of days, I can understand why that is a boon. That and Lily being able to get some quiet away from her class as well. I take my seat after Lily's poured the tea for us and sits down. The more time we s I spend with these two girls, the more I think they're a perfect foil to Misha and Shizune. Even without a voice, Shizune is direct and brash, and Misha seems to get along with everyone. On the other hand, Lily is soft-spoken and relaxed, while Hanako seems to be the shyest girl I've ever met. So, how are you faring in Yamaku, Hisao? You seemed a bit flustered before. Apart from getting lost every now and again and being crash-tackled outside my classroom? Fine, I guess. You... you looked pretty hurt before. Are you really... okay? For a brief moment, I consider telling Hanako and Lily about my condition, but then I pulled it back. I can't tell you why, but for some reason I feel uncomfortable talking about it to these relative strangers, even if they have been pretty friendly. Yeah, it's nothing. I was just a bit startled. Judging from the two girls' expressions, I don't think that they're buying it. But in... But, in what I assume is their way of respecting my privacy, they don't press the matter. I guess that is one of the unwritten rules around here. Don't ask. Even if people's conditions are obvious, like Hanako's, there's still bound to be a story involved. Everyone has things that they don't feel comfortable speaking about, and I think everyone here recognizes that. So, um, how long have you been in this school? You both seem to know your way around pretty well. Hmm. Well, I've been here since the start of high school, but only moved into the dormitories a year ago. Hanako joined at the start of high school as well, and moved to the dormitories when she did, if, if memory serves me right. That's right. Since... high school. 
So you've known each other since then? Since I moved, yes. Hanako lives next door to me, so it's only natural, right? Right. Yeah, of course. Living next to someone is probably reason enough to befriend them, though I'm guessing that Lily's blindness played a part in it as well. I can't imagine Hanako easily making friends with someone who has to deliberately avoid looking at her scars. With the immediate conversation dried up, we start to eat our lunch. It isn't long before the bells are signaling the end of the break. Like me, the girls pack up their lunches as efficiently as they set them out. I guess I'd better be off. Are you going with Hasao, Hanako? Hanako looks up at me, and for a second I can see that she's considering skipping class, maybe just to avoid walking to the classroom with me. Yes. I don't know what to think of it. Hanako really is delicate to the point of breaking if looked at the wrong way. It makes me a bit nervous too, but I push the feeling aside, trying to be as natural as I can. We should hurry then. Class has already started by the sound of it. Lily gives a nod of farewell as she bends down to take her cane. Hanako and I fi- Okay, let me try that whole sentence again because I screwed up at several points. Lily gives a nod of farewell as she bends down to take her cane. Hanako and I filing out before her. We walk quickly down the empty halls to our respective classes. As we reach the door to Lily's 3-2 classroom, she turns towards me. Hisao, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. And with that, we part ways. Lily entering her classroom and leaving Hanako and me to make off to our own. She's still looking like she wants to run away. <laughs> so... Do you really want to go back to class now? Yes. Okay, then. I feel like I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would be appropriate and safe enough. And Lily was right. The more time we spend out here, the more explaining we have to do. I open the rear door to the class and walk in. The teacher looks up at me and opens his mouth to say something. However, as Hanako follows me in and closes the door... He simply nods to us and continues his lecture. This is the third time that Hanako has had her truancy part practically ignored. There's definitely something going on here. We make our way to our seats, and I notice that Misha and Shizune are both missing as well. I wonder if it is some form of informal agreement with the staff, or if it's a perk afforded to the unique students of this school. Trying to make as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person, despite the f weird first impression I got, and the material is, definite, is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius. When the final bell sounds, I realize that there's still a lot of time left in the day. I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd. At the hospital, I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here, filling the considerably shorter hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Muto is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, marking them with a red ball pen. Raising his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? I jump at him addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's nobody else around. Uh, nothing. Think about what I do after school. Teacher slowly puts the cap on the pen he's holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. Seems very methodical. For a brief moment, I'm reminded of Shizune, but the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routined. You have no plans? No. I considered joining a club, but don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest. I guess. I just... But I don't know how to continue from there. Muto looks at me in the same way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about... 
the disabilities. It's like... It feels like I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. Teacher scratches his cheek absentmindedly, looking very unresponsive. These things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone, even if they're blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance. He says the same thing as Yuko did. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako. It's not like you can ignore her face. But... I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in, hand, hands straight in an enthusiastic greeting, her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. She starts toward the teacher's desk with her bouncing step, hands energetically swinging with the rhythm. Muto, visibly dismayed at the interruption and Misha in general, slumps in his chair. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around cluelessly, as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong but has no idea what. Yes? We've talked about volume control before. Y yes But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So, what is it? I... we need help! We are running out of supplies for the festival stands! This is a distress! She waves a pink slip of paper she's holding around. So, go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood! Plywood is always the problem! Last time we wanted more than there was... Last time we wanted more, there was only a little. But that time we just took it all and went with that! Now there's, like, none left there. So do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? She, John, I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know if there's plywood. Was she wrong? Muto looks like he's in great pain, frowning with his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is t Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible, like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. I'm afraid I have no idea if there is any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Oh, what should I do? Perhaps try to find Mr. Nomiya? I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Uh, I don't have the time! We are so busy! She holds her head with both of her hands, looking as despairing as it's possible for a person like her, without even noticing she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. We shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do and we're falling behind schedule. Muto looks at her gravely, and then suddenly smiles. The smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if he didn't. I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He switches to staring at me focusedly, with a hard expression, as if trying to say, Go make some friends. Ellipses. I guess I can give you a hand. You can? Thanks, Heechan. Oh, you're really nice. She pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger, yelling, Ah! and looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's Heechan doing here? Class is over. You should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh no. It's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Heechan? No, I'm not. Is Heechan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get her off the teacher's back. So, what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but that has no implications on whether I'm joining the council or not. Aww. Still thanks, Hichan. 
It's trying to be quick. We are in a stall building streak now. We must hurry. Hurry, hurry. She bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so s Oh. <laughs> okay, let me try that again. Because I feel like this deserves a better performance than that. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Oh, please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's. I heave a sigh. I'll be going, then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. Classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to classes 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side, and 3-4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor still, with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room, a thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. At least this looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big windows, shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. <laughs> Jokingly, I call into the empty room. Anybody hu- Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform, with a fork between her toes, a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands. But her presence here is what takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her eyes, with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned into silence, punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Hello. The girl stuffs the forkful in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. This is a bit awkward. Um, hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here. For some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here, too. She picks up another forkful. Doesn't that mean you're here, then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was suspecting my observation was false. You're pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl's pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. The sound of Kai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. And joking about these ma matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. While I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate, whether this girl is, she seems to have lost interest in me, and is now gazing yearningly back at her food. Uh, can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Uh, go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use, then? There's no word for a meal you eat after lunch, but before dinner, right? It bothers me very much, too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. But I'm hungry now. My delicious box lunch would go to waste otherwise. They have curry. It's very delicious. With much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes. And with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. 
So, Nikai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I've come to a full stop, opening my worth, opening my mouth, but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition. Or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. <laughs> it, it almost did once there. I do get the feeling that not making issues of this is a part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here could relate. Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can relate to Shizune's circum. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances or Lily's either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Ren keeps considering what my condition could be, with an overtly contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary, like this lunch of mine. Endless delicious. The problem must be in your pants. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement, and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with, catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back even physically as Rin's eyes widen in revelation and astonishment. So I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Still partially in shock, but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing I can think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem, arrhythmia. Ellipses. I said it. More like blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How oh, boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry to let you down? I forgive you. Just, I collect people, and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh. So you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Yeah, pretty much. I see. Ellipses. With little left to say, Rin resumes her lunch and the conversation dies away. But I keep thinking about what she said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it like every other student here so far. Should I have told it as a part of the natural introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Hisao. I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. <sighs> what a disgusting thought. Maybe this Tezuka girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is burnt and auburn. Sorry, her hair is burnt auburn, almost orange and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She's not particularly pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs, even when she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this sight could, com could discomfort people, especially while eating. Makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but uh, it's too late now, isn't it? Keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable. So I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone and this late? Or do you get the occasional visitor? 
Visitors. Maybe you're my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat, I eat with a certain person on the roof if she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Oh. Hmm, that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as Rin forks the last bits of her meal into her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. And it seems I have everything except... <laughs> Let me try that again. I look down at my hall and double check it with Misha's list. Oh, it seems I have everything. Except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. And I don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you're going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping? Uh, I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. Uh, I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine. And then I'm Hisao. Then you are? Ellipses. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating f Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. Something like a tiny smile there in her face. Maybe. Quietly back out of the room. As I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, What an intriguing person. From my inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. <laughs> what did she hear? I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she'd gotten the jumping distance of me without making a sound. Creepy. Briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about a global feminist conspiracy, but I push that thought aside. Shizune, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No, wait. More importantly, who's in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? He took so long that we had to come check what's wrong. That's no good, Hichan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Oh, sorry. I got the things here. Was just going to bring them. I think you were up to some mischief, Hichan. Who was in there with you, I wonder? Misha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she's experiencing. With Shizune's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders. From suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me, too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rin is sleeping on one of the tables. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. <laughs> Who were you getting pregnant? <laughs> Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door to find Rin directly behind it, looking at us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Ellipses. Miss Tezuka, what do you think you are doing? 
You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such uh, a disgraceful activity. Sure is ver suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. Fnew some advice. If someone is angrily signing at you, put a finger to your heart and draw circles on your heart. Ah, uh, cause my mom taught me sign language when I was a kid. I should know this one. Ah, uh, nope. That was when I was like six to eight years old. It's just gone. That means you're sorry. Okay. At any rate, she ignores Shizune slash Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune taps Misha's shoulder, points at Rin, and makes some quick signs. Ellipses. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Ellipses. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizune's cold stare is putting at her. I keep wondering that about... I keep wondering about that myself, too. Ellipses. And... I'll think about it harder. As Misha signs her reply to Shizune, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Ellipses. Miss Tezuka, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up their lunch onto it. Rin nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't. Not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin frowns thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. I'm about to ask what project she has and what are these apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dull clang. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Ugh, heavy. Yeah, sure. Where do you need to take it? Away. With that, she takes off into the hallway, me and the paint can following since there's little choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet and empty now with Shizune and Misha gone, so we too leave towards the stairwell at the other end. Every 10 or, fi every 10 or 15 or 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to another because the thin handle cuts into my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Rin strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching. Or maybe I'm walking weird because of the extra weight. Seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears. <clears throat> Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears in the form of the head nurse and his fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Kai. What a happy coincidence. Tezuka too, of course. He nods courteously to Rin, who does not acknowledge him back, then turns to me because, obviously, it's me he had some business with. There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medications. Since you haven't been that long on your current medications, there might be some unexpected side effects which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So, we will do a few tests regularly, but what I want is for you to keep an eye on everything in your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. And come see me if something happens. Alright. 
So, how are you? Everything fine? I give up and drop the can to the floor before answering him. Apparently, this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as an answer, but then I realize how often I've done that all lately. Other people have asked me that too. Teachers and students here. My parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's natural for a hospital, <laughs> not so much for a school. Except this school. This is a small school, and both the student base and the faculty seem to be very tightly knit. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. And this is not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. So the thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyway. Ellipses. That's great. Uh, also, one other thing. My sources tell me that you've been at neither the school track nor even the pool, so I'd like to know if you have taken up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't, but his way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running my ass off on the track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? Not as much. I just happen to know a few people. But that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift the can up and down a few times, l like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. A stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then comes back like it was never gone. Hey, Tezuka, would you give us a second? Nurse grabs me by the shoulder without waiting for Rin's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you're still in your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down s this hard on you is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it'll be. Same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise me to be more serious about this from now on? I mean, yes. I'm gonna put my best foot forward here. Yeah, I promise. Definitely. Definitely. He studies me for a moment and then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. He leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer. And I walk to Rin, who's been waiting, idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pale lighting fixtures in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? Comes out more accusatory than I intended, and accidentally lashing out on her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confidentiality, too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Rin's fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Rin is just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. <sighs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inexplicable lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're for my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. Rin keeps looking at me for a while longer. She neither says anything further, nor displays any kind of emotion I could discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital was easy, but I still haven't sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with this disability. We leave the main building, and Rin leads us onwards towards the dorm. We stopped at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on a slightly elevated ground, with a wall and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go. It's probably the only inconvenient design in this school. The entire wall, made of the same kind of bricks as the building itself, has been covered with some sort of a painting. Most of it is still mere sketches, quick lines drawn with black and white against the gray plastering that covers Almost the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces and legs and hands, 
I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seem to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground beside the wall. See, the left side is hardly off the ground yet. It's because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead, and then it was suddenly morning. I have to work on it, but the guys from art class are helping with the negative spaces and base surfaces whenever, which is a problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better. It's faster, too. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a little with her arm, or whatever of it there actually is, to demonstrate... to demonstrate, even though I got the point already. The white cotton of her sleeves flaps around, and it makes me think it could look sadder than it does. But it makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible reminder of the student base's special properties has in the past few days. This girl doesn't know is my dreary feelings, of course, or the fact that she lost me a while ago already and just keeps on blabbering. So that's why I'm trying to figure out if there's something I need to figure out, and then figure out, and then figure that out before it's too late and all hope is lost. Why would the hope be lost? Because paint has to be painted, and then it has to dry, and then it has to be painted over with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinking she made some kind of a statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project? You did this? Yes. Yes. All of it? Yes. Nice, but... I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into a minefield of political incorrectness. It's okay. You can say it. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say, if any. It feels that I'm way more sensitive than Rin is, though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? See? I'm an easy person to talk to, right? With my feet. I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is. Then maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how adept she was using her feet to eat, I figure painting might not be a problem either. Neither of us has anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light works pretty well. I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I want to see what it would look like in dim light. Do you think it's flat? Uh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Uh, not like that flat. You know, flat. Like some, peop like some people are. No substance. No meat where there should be some. I know a few girls who... Okay, I get it, but I couldn't really tell. I'm not good, that good with art. I can't name any artists or artistic terms. So I don't really have anything to say. Rin shrugs her shoulders at that, saying... Suit yourself, without saying it, and looks up at the sky, as if trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you give me a hand with the paints, I could do a little before it's too dark. I wanted to get a halogen lamp, like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit my help, as was Shusune. Really makes me feel that the festival's such a big project that every pair of hands is needed. Why not? I'm not really sure if I can be of any help, though. It's just making, mixing some paints. You can do that. Probably. Do you have motor control problems? Like, you know, those people who have some? Cerebral palsy, maybe? <laughs> not that I know of. I get it. Her thingy has nothing to do with that. She gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it, then. So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toe toes of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls of mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl, like syrup. I mix them, creating funny, hypnotic-looking swirl patterns that melt quickly into each other to form new, a new, monotone hue. Rin sets to work, every now and then asking for me to hand 
for a hand with something or the other. Ellipses. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to be the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is a frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last millimeter before she's satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Add half a splash of green. I crouch down to pick up the can of bright green. And the other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint into the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea. You're the artist here. A hint of a smile appears in the corners of her mouth. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay. Because I just got an idea. Because I just got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule amount of white into the bowl and mix it. It looks slightly... wider. That's not good. It has to be like... Like the color when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of life in your dream but can't remember it. Maybe it's yellow. Ellipses. Despite the impossibility of mixing a color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense that's being imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Seeing a painting being born on the plastered wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing paints, crouching down on the paving, and just looking at her work. It feels slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy, but Rin doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. I'm smiling ear to ear right now because I know exactly what's going on with all this. Her entire presence emits a completely different air as she patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. And even those short discussions soon evolve into a shorthand, both of us developing and using weird, impromptu code words for various paints and hues. As if there was some need to converse words. As if there was some need to conserve words and breath and sound. We stay there, late into the evening, until it becomes too dark to paint properly. I think I've said this before on a stream, once upon a time, but it's very interesting watching, watching other people paint, and it's very interesting watching at a, you know, looking over a huge profile of pictures that somebody has put together. Because art is you. Art is what's in your head. It's gotta come from something. It's an amalgamation of what you think is important. It's something you want to say to other people. So there is a bit of intimacy there, seeing somebody paint, seeing what their process is, because if you're paying attention, it tells you a great, great deal about who they are as a person. But what I, what would I know, right? Fellow creative type. All right, everybody. Oh my goodness. I have been sitting here for four hours straight, and I need to take a little bit of a break before we come back in about 30 minutes and do some Axiom Verge. Ugh. But before we go, don't hop anywhere quite yet. Something we do at the end of every single stream. A couple different things we do at the end of every stream. For instance, this is a D20. And we rolled an 11. Good number. Like, nice round number. A one on each side. It's it's even, except not even, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Still doesn't mean anything amazing is going to happen tonight. We need a 20 for that. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. If you, li if you enjoyed this at all, please leave a follow, because we're going to be playing visual novels every single Sunday from now on, from 4 to 8 Eastern Standard Time. But until then... 
until then. Uh, don't go too far because we're going to be coming back in about 30 minutes and, and continuing our playthrough of Axiom Verge. Blind, no less. I want to throw that out there. But in the meantime, stretch your legs, get something to eat, drink some water, whatever you want to do. And until then, I'm What the Fnoo. Later, everybody. <laughs>